Good morning, family. Welcome to Second Chance Church. It's glad to see you here this morning. God bless you. We love you. Um, we're getting ready to have a few announcements here this morning. So um, I want you to listen to the announcements, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. God bless you.
announcements to make this morning. The first is we will be live streaming our services on next Sunday outside, June 7th. Uh, more information to come. Hopefully we'll be able to gather all here together. We're inviting you here Sunday. Hopefully we'll have something where we can all come together and safely social distance and be a part of the service, whether it be that we do it from our cars or we're in a big tent or however we're gonna do it. More information to come with that. So look forward to seeing um, more information about how we're gonna do that next Sunday, June 7th, together here outside from Pastor. Next is please take a second to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube when you see it. For all the people that don't know how to do it, um, get with some of us younger people and let us come and help you do that so that you can watch it whenever. You can go back and reference. You can do whatever. Also, while you're watching right now live, share, 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 share. Invite somebody. Text somebody. Call somebody. Let them know that we're on to watch us um, have this service. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe here on Facebook Live and on YouTube when we upload it. Also, we have started our recovery services, passing out diapers, water, water filters, masks, and snack bags for the kids. Um, this will be happening on Tuesday, every Tuesday at the church here, 2070 Coldwater Road from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and also on Thursdays at Jefferson from 11 to 1 also, 5306 North Street in Flint. If you have any questions or anything, give us a call. Hit us up on Facebook, y'all. Inboxes, do something, but make sure you get with us. We love you. We miss you. Hope to see you next Sunday, June 7, in the parking lot.
I give you praise. Well, we thank God for all of you that are live streaming today and being a part of our worship service. Um, I've been a little burdened by um, what I've been seeing going on across this nation today. So today we want to talk to the Joshua generation, to the millennials, to our young people that are out there today. First, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your tender kindness. We, we ask you right now to lift up our country, to calm our country down, to bless us, to strengthen us, to guide us and direct us and lead us. Lord, we ask a special prayer for Attorney Ken Scott today and Harriet Scott. Be with them right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to be with those that have lost loved ones and those that are sick today. We ask you to heal our land. We can't do it without you. We need you today, Lord. We ask you to bless anyone that's watching today, wherever you might be. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross so that we might be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn with me to the book of Joshua, first chapter, first verse. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the, servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. He says, I will give you every place where you set your feet, your feet as I promised Moses. I want to talk about when it's your time, it's your time. And it's your time right now. Everything that happens in our lives happens for a purpose. So we have to recognize that life itself is a didactic, it's a, a teaching moment. It's a classroom that moves us and prepares us for the moment that God takes us to the place that we're supposed to be. That's why we have to keep our spiritual antennas up so that we don't miss what God is saying in this season. The children of Israel were God's chosen people. The children of Israel were in Egypt because Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob, had favor with Pharaoh. If you remember the story of Joseph, Joseph had a dream and as a result of his dreams, Pharaoh turned control of his empire over to Joseph. Then the Bible said in Exodus 1 and 8, that a new king, a new pharaoh, Ramesses, the second, the, the second he came into power, the Bible says that he did not know anything about Joseph. And this new pharaoh decided that there were too many Israelites. So the Bible says that they put slave masters, they put militia, they put racist police over them. And as a result, the children of Israel who had entered Egypt as welcome guests were now subject to a life of bondage and servitude. They were forced to make brick without straw. I, I found out that when people don't know, don't know and don't care about your history, they will treat you any kind of way. That's why the country is in such an uproar right now. So the children of Israel cried out for 400 years. They cried long and they cried loud. They did not burn. They did not protest. They did not break. They, they did not. They, 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 they cried long. They cried loud. They, they did not burn. They protested, but they didn't break windows. They cried. They protested. They didn't set fires. They cried out to God for wisdom. And God began to move on their behalf. And on the backside of the desert, here this, here's this shepherd 
80 years old, tending sheep. And God speaks to him in a bush that's on fire, but the fire does not burn out. And God says to Moses, Moses, I want you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You, you know the story. And there begins Moses' assignment to go and bring God's chosen people out of Egypt. That's his assignment. Now, Moses' life was significant. And that should be what all of our lives are about. We must contribute to the times we live in. Someone said that it doesn't matter how young or how old you are, when it's your time, it's your time. And the reality is that we have no time to waste, bicker, and argue. We're not going to be here forever. We need to recognize that Moses died, and now the Bible says the mantle is passed to Joshua. And Joshua receives his assignment. Joshua's assignment was to take the children of Israel into the promised land. Joshua's leadership represented a new shift, a new paradigm, a new way of looking at things, bright ideas, fresh anointing. I'm talking to somebody right now that God says that it's your time now. So God wants you to move to a place of leadership. Young people that are protesting, when you are not organized and don't have leadership, all you are is a mob. So we need leadership. We can't afford to have people sit back and procrastinate and watch people destroy and more, and pe more people lose their lives. And you sit back and you watch CNN or you watch on Facebook and say, what a shame. God says every event in your life has prepared you for this moment. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do what God wants me to do. Tell somebody it's, it's time. It's time for that vision to come inside of you. It's time for you to write that book you were supposed to write. It's time for you to get that degree you were supposed to have. It's time for that job you've been after. It's time for that business that you've been ready to open up. God says no longer can you sit back idle and think it's going to fall out of the sky. It's time for our brothers to stop become, being victims and become victors. This is a God moment, and you're going to have to step out and do what God has called you to do. This will be your finest hour because God had you tune in this morning and tell you it's your time now. I need you out there watching today to lay your hand on yourself this morning and say, I've been prepared for purpose. The Bible says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, a, a son of Nun, Moses aid. Let's be clear, Joshua was a student of Moses. The first thing God wants you to know is that you cannot lead if you've never learned how to follow. God will never trust leadership to people who have not passed fellowship one-on-one. Right now you have many people trying to lead who have never followed. What you really need to see here is the purpose of being faithful. The anointing that was on Moses was the same anointing that God allowed to fall down on Joshua. Let me show you something. Numbers 11, 14, and 17. Moses gets overwhelmed with his responsibility. And Moses cries out to God and says, Lord, I cannot handle all these people by myself. He says, the burden is too heavy for me. Matter of fact, in verse 15, Moses said, Lord, if this is how you're going to treat me, just put me to death right now. Because I can't do this by myself. But what I love about God is that when you cry out, he will respond. Look at what he says to Moses in verse 16. The Lord heard Moses cry and says, Moses, bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them to come to the tent of the meeting that they may stand there with you. God says, I will come down and speak with you there and I will take of the spirit that's on you and put that spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. The anointing that's on leadership ought to also be on fellowship. That means that we have to share in this together. You see, the problem for me is that there are many of us who want the anointing of the blessing, but we don't want the anointing of the burden. Uh, and the truth is you'll never get the blessing until you learn how to share in the burden. Even Paul says that if you don't suffer with Jesus, you cannot reign with him. 2 Corinthians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. 
See, it didn't say that I have this ministry. It says we have. When you understand how to share in ministry or share in a cause, your vocabulary changes. You don't walk around talking about what? What are y'all going to do? When are y'all going to stop killing blacks? No, we have this ministry. Not, not when y'all, what are, not when, when are y'all going to do it? When are we going to do something? Everything that we're going through right now in this country, we're in this together. We, we, have to, we have too many people that want to control everything, but don't want to share in the burden of the work. It don't take nothing to break a window. It don't take nothing to set a fire. It don't take nothing to just tear up cities that we live in. But it takes some, it takes some, some, some fortitude to stand and, and protest and argue about what you want, but not react to what you want all the time. Whatever Moses did, Joseph, J Joshua supported the vision. When you share in something you support, that means you tie your resources to it. Mm -hmm. See, Joshua served the vision of somebody else before God released it into him. And God will never bless you until you learn how to serve someone else's vision. There are too many of us that want to do our own thing and we don't want to serve anybody else. But there comes a time that you have to learn how to be faithful over a few things and then God will make you ruler over many things. See, Joshua understood that this was preparation for, this was preparation for his future. My Bible says that Moses died. Moses' life represented a significant era of leadership. But what I want you to understand is that whenever God gets ready to assign you, something is going to have to die. Many of you right now can tell there's some areas of your life that are dead. There's some relationships that are dead. There's some seasons in your life that you know are over. And you need to know that it's time to step out and move to the next dimension of your life. One chapter is over and another chapter begins. I know I'm talking to somebody right now and you know that God is shifting you. You know that things are shifting in your life. You can no longer be a passenger in your best friend's car. You got to understand that God has given you your own keys now. God sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. This is going to be the greatest season in your life. It has you prepared. God was preparing Joshua. In Exodus 17... 9 through 14, when you get home, I want you to read it. God let Joshua leave Israel in the battle against Amalek. In Exodus 24 and 13, God allowed Moses to take Joshua up to Mount Sinai where the Ten Commandments were written. In Numbers 27, 15 through 23, it was there where Joshua got his assignment that he was going to succeed Moses. Everything that you have been through, every experience, the water crisis, the COVID crisis, the black people dying crisis, the economic crisis, the lack of leadership crisis, the lack of job crisis, it was necessary to bring you to this season right now. God knew that you could not handle it five years ago, but he knows you're ready and mature enough to walk right into it. This is your season, and you're strong enough and wise enough to handle it. So then you, what you need to do is learn how to pursue the prophetic. Yeah. Verse 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses is gone now. That season, though significant, is over. There was a season in your life very significant, but it's over. Now go on and have Moses' funeral because you gotta, come, you gotta go on. You can't ride Moses' coattail any longer. We can't ride Dr. Martin Luther King's coattail no longer. We can't ride Jesse Jackson's coattail no longer. We cannot ride people like that coattail no longer. They're gone. This is our season. We have to stand up and take men and make change happen. And change happens not through war, not through fighting all the time. Change happens for us by our voice and our vote. We all got to be um, active and do what God wants us to do right now. This is our season. We can't be codependent on nobody helping us right now. It's our time. 
Bible says, now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. People of God, when you're in pursuit of the prophetic, whenever God speaks, you got to move. You got to be the kind of person that when God speaks a thing, you do a thing. See, this separates successful people from average people. Average, average people have to get information from other people. And when you have to get all your information from space book, most of the information is wrong. But successful people, whenever God says move, they instinctively move. See, we don't need affirmation from everybody. We don't need you to vote about it. Whatever God, whatever God says go, we just go. And there are some people like that right now. Whenever God says move on it, you just got to move on it. Some people think you've lost your mind, but you just got to do what God says do. You understand that this, you understand that this always places you under scrutiny and criticism like Noah. It places you like you under the kind of persecution like Nehemiah, but you're still willing to do what God wants you to do. That's why you have to operate in faith because God tells Joshua, get ready to cross over the Jordan. Take somebody and tell them, get ready. You have to get up and Go for it. You got to recognize that this is going to take faith. You got to stop calculating what if this and what if that happens. Because while you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. You're talking about what if I don't have the money? What if nobody's going to support me? What if nobody likes me? You got to say, God, if you told me, I trust you. You got to have the kind of faith that is just crazy faith. Is there anybody I'm talking to out there that has crazy faith? Crazy, out-of-the-box faith. I heard this bishop say, it's the kind of faith that says when you move on something, you feel like you're lying to yourself. When you talk about it, you feel like you're telling a lie. And people ask you, are you serious? And you, you say, I believe that God said, I can have it. I believe that I can just step out in it. Anybody listening got crazy faith this morning? God is showing me stuff that just does not make sense. God is telling me to do stuff that just does not make sense. I'm just trusting him. See, don't miss your blessing because what you need is on the other side of the Jordan. You can't sit on the side sucking your thumb and twiddling your toes because what you need is on the other side of the Jordan. You got to get up and go across the Jordan. Do, do not fear the Jordan because you don't know what's on the other side. God says your blessings are on the other side. So whatever I got to do, if I got to scratch, if I got to claw, if I got to crawl, if I got to swim, whatever I got to do to get my blessing, I'm going on the other side of the Jordan. And on the other side of Jordan is my victory today. Verse 2 says, Joshua, you get ready and take all the people with you. God says this is bigger than you and I. What God is calling us to do is bigger than us. So stop sitting up and taking this thing personally. Because no matter how frustrated that you might be right now, whatever decisions that you're going to make is going to affect a whole generation. There are lives hanging in the balance today based on our next decision. We can go out and burn or we can pray and we can get together and decide what kind of moves we're going to make like civilized human beings. That's why you have to see that it's bigger than you. That's why the devil is coming at you like he's coming at us right now. Because it's not about us. He's trying to stop a whole nation from moving. People of God, you have to walk in it. You have to trust God even if you can't see it, even if it does not exist. Because when you operate in this kind of faith, all you got is a promise. See, there's some people right now that are live streaming today. They don't have the money. They don't have the tuition. They don't have the building. They don't have the support. But one thing they have is a word. And that's all we need. Some of you watching today because somebody invited you to watch but you're getting a word. Some of you move, move where you are living right now on a word. A lot of people are looting and protesting right now and burning down cities they live on on a word, on a bad word. So remember, you can do something negative on a negative word or you can do something positive on a positive word. 
you got to have some crazy faith. Some of you don't realize what crazy faith is, but you do it all the time. Let me give you an example before I close. You look online, you see some shoes you want to order. So you convince yourself when you see them shoes that the Lord wanted you to have them shoes. And you're saying, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, these are the ones. They just showed up on my phone. And I know you showed me these shoes, Jesus. So watch your crazy faith. You see the picture of the shoes. So then you go on some website that you don't know nothing about. And you order them. And you put them in your basket. Then you go to your checkout and give some company that you know nothing about all your personal information, your credit card number. And then you sow a seed by giving a total stranger a machine, your credit card number, because you want what you see. Then they turn around and give you a confirmation number. So you're good. You're walking around smiling. Somebody won't know what's wrong with you. I just got some shoes. Well, where are you? Shoes. Let me show you. They're not on your feet. Where are you? Well, they're in my phone. Why are you making room in your closet? Why are you pulling out outfits? You don't even have them shoes yet. Yeah. You, you're already matching stuff up. But you don't even have them yet. Right. Where are they? Tell yourself they're in process. Because you made a crazy faith transaction. Yeah. Yeah. That one day Brown or FedEx or the post office is going to stop by your house and drop off those shoes. Child of God, that's what crazy faith does. Yeah. When I see what I want in God's word, I got a number to call. Matthew 7 and 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Don't laugh at me when you see me sending my seed in the PayPal or cash out because I believe in sowing for what I'm waiting on. And I know that my blessing is in process because no good thing will he withhold from them that walk. Touch your neighbor, tell somebody, I got a confirmation number. That everything I'm believing God is for is coming to pass in my life. Joshua generation, you're a very unique generation. Because what the Joshua generation will do is praise God on a promise. That's what made Joshua generation so unique. The Bible says in verse 3, I will give you every place. Where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Whenever God speaks a thing, it's not a suggestion, it's a promise. The Bible says the promises of God are yea and amen. And this suggests when God speaks a thing, he blesses a thing. And when he blesses it, it's a done deal. If you only knew what was already done, you'd not be walking around being destructive. If you only knew what was already done, every place the sole of your foot shall tread. If I have faith, if my faith can be stretched to it, my feet can walk in it and God will give it to me. Every place where you set your foot, I will give it to you as I promised Moses. The scope of the promise has to take you way back as he said unto Moses. When Israel was walking, they were not walking like out to the end of the driveway. They had to walk through the wilderness. In Deuteronomy 8 and 4, I want you to see something. They had been walking in the wilderness for 40 years. God said, I did not let your clothes wear out and your feet did not swell. In other words, I did not let your path get infected. Because if your foot swells, infection sets in. So God says, I did not let you get infected by all the stuff that was in your way. I just let you walk. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Just remember that he has kept you over these years. And most of us should not even be here after all we've been through. I should have been infected by some stuff, but I'm still walking. I should have lost my mind by some stuff I smoked and drank, but I'm still walking. So God says, my promise to you is everywhere your feet touch. And God says, remember, I kept your feet. 
I don't want you to leave out here thinking that you can't go walking anywhere. You're liable to walk on something that does not belong to you. No, the devil is a liar. Psalms 37 and 23 said the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord, which means wherever I go, I have orders to be there. Am I talking to anybody today? But here it is. Wherever I set my feet, God says, that's what I'm going to give to you. Now, why would you burn down, loot, and destroy something that God has promised you in the name of Jesus? Don't burn, loot, and destroy it because somebody lost their life. The Lord says, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. The Lord says, every place you set your feet, I've already done. We need some soldiers right now that will walk and pray and say, God, protect our land. Lord, protect our children. Lord, protect our property. And I know that some of you listening are saying, how's this going to happen? Well, it's not because we have been so good. I'll tell you how it's going to happen. One word, favor. I dare you to text three people and tell them favor on you. That all the child of God needs is favor. And I come to prophesy today. God said that you've been trusting him, that you've been serving him, that you've been sowing seed. God told me to tell you, get ready because it's your time. He says, don't wait till the battle is over. But he says, go on and open up your mouth and shout like it's already done. See, I'm glad that you did not give up. I'm glad that you kept trusting God because it's on you. The same anointing that God used on one generation is the same anointing he has on your generation. And whatever God does, he all, it always goes from glory to glory, which means when he did it in one generation, if you thought that was something, God is about to take you to a whole different level. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for you. I want you to know what time it is. No matter how crazy it looks out there, no matter what happens over the next few days, mm -hmm. it's time. Time to go back to school. Yes. It's time to open your business. Yes. It's time to go on and do what God has called you to do. Step in it. Walk in it. Yes. Live in it. Somebody ought to give God some praise. I'm talking to the Joshua generation today. I'm talking for those that have been in the trenches, those that have been waiting in the cut. I want you to thank God for what he's about to do in your life. I want you to thank him for the doors he's about to open, ways he's about to make. Every place that your foot sets, God is going to give it to you. It's time. God has taken you through a series of preparatory moments. You got to see it like, the Lord is preparing me for something that I cannot handle right now. Be like a sponge. Yeah. Take all he has. Soak it all up. The devil wants to destroy you. Mm -hmm. God wants you to have it. Mm -hmm. It's your decision this morning. Yeah. Shall we pray? God, we thank you. Thank you. We ask right now for peace all across our nation. We ask you to protect our young people out there that are doing things that don't make sense right now. Lord, we ask you to change our whole White House administration. Change the language they speak to us. We ask you to bless our governors and our leaders all across this nation. We ask you to change the hearts of our police officers. We ask you to change the lives and the minds of those that are protesting today. And Lord, we ask a special prayer that if anybody does not know you today, that all that they would do is confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And the Bible said, thou shalt be saved. And when we believe in you, we can believe in your promises. And your promises are the things that have kept us. Those are the things that we've been able to hold on to. So Lord, for this we give you thanks. And for this we give you praise. In the blessed name of Jesus, we claim victory today. 
over everything we're going through. We claim victory. We claim victory. We claim victory today in Jesus' name. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. Let everybody who's listening just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.